Welcome, travelers, to Adventures in Security. I'm your guide, Tom Olzak. Understanding today's cloud requires an understanding of cloud terminology. This video defines essential concepts and terms based on the ISC Squared Certified Cloud Security Professional Body of Knowledge. I'll use all of these terms in additional videos aimed at safe cloud computing. You can download the script for this video formatted as a study guide from the link in the video description. First, let's look at some general cloud definitions. A cloud application is software that is not run on a user's device. Instead, it runs on another device accessible via a network. One of the essential elements of safe cloud computing is portability. Portability ensures that data and applications can move from one cloud provider to another, avoiding cloud vendor lock-in. Cloud computing provides compute, storage, and network services, usually using a shared pool of resources. According to Mel and Grants, writing for the NIST, true cloud computing possesses five essential characteristics. First, on-demand self-service. The customer can quickly use additional resources via a portal instead of having to rely on the CSP or IT to execute a work order. Broad network access. Resources are available anytime and anywhere. Resource pooling. Cloud computing can reduce costs because customers use a collection of shared resources instead of purchasing individual servers, storage, and network capacity for their own private use in their own private data center. Rapid elasticity. Before cloud services, an organization had to purchase compute and other resources that would meet low and high resource needs that can change based on time, events, or other conditions. With cloud computing, customers only use and pay for the resources used, automatically increasing and decreasing resource use as needed. And measured service. Measured service provides a metering capability that only charges customers for the resources they use. Cloud service category is a collection of cloud services with common characteristics. Multi-tenancy is a sharing of, pool, of a pool of resources by multiple CSP customers, including servers and storage. Cloud customers must have the ability to remove all data and other resources they own, lease, or in any other way created because of cloud use from a CSP when needed. This is known as reversibility. In other words, deleting and removing anything related to the cloud customer. And finally, a tenant is a customer that shares a resource pool. Now let's look at cloud service models. While many vendor created models exist like BAAS, Business Process as a Service, there are only three service models recognized by everyone, IAAS, PAAS, and SAAS. IAAS is Infrastructure as a Service that provides basic compute, storage, and network infrastructure without operating systems or other software. The CSP is responsible for the governance and security of its facilities and the resources it provides. The customer is responsible for the governance of any applications and services it installs, and customers are always responsible for the governance and security of the data. An important point here is that securing the infrastructure and data in the cloud is a shared responsibility. But as we'll see in, in later in this video and in other videos, the customer is always responsible for securing the data. PaaS, or P-A-A-S, is Platform as a Service, and it's commonly used by developers, providing the resources of IAAS and adding operating systems, languages, services, and tools needed to develop and implement both testing and production environments. Again, the customer is responsible for what it installs in the clouds. 
and SaaS. Software as a Service provides the customer all compute, storage, network, and software resources. A simple example is Dropbox. However, the customer is always responsible for the governance and security of the data, including access controls, role definitions, and ensuring that the CSP continues to protect the data as expected. In addition to service models, the cloud also has deployment models. Let's explore the deployment models of private, community, public, and hybrid. A private cloud has all or most of the five characteristics I described earlier. The big difference is the limited access to shared resources because a private cloud is completely owned and used by a single organization. There's no shared pooling. There's no tenancy. It can reside in a CSP facility or in the organization's data center. Because resources are not shared, the costs are higher than the other models, but the customer has full control and responsibility over all of the cloud resources. Private clouds are often used to store and process highly sensitive data. Community clouds are created by a group of organizations with one or more common interests. Owned by one or more of the community members, a third party, or a combination of these, they can reside at a CSP facility or on-premise. Public clouds are what we normally think of when someone mentions the cloud. A public cloud is a shared pool of resources that is owned and managed by a CSP. And finally, a combination of two or more of the previous models is known as a hybrid cloud. As we see in a later video, hybrid clouds are more difficult to manage and to keep safe. Finally, let's look at cloud roles. Multiple roles exist, and those are roles needed to provide and manage cloud computing. A cloud auditor is responsible for auditing cloud systems and applications. A cloud service broker helps organizations engage with the right set of cloud services with the right master service agreement and SLAs. They can also help with the move from on-premise processing to the cloud. A cloud service customer is an organization that has a business relationship with a CSP. In other words, it could be a tenant. Cloud service partners provide third-party services to a cloud customer or CSP to enable or improve cloud services. If you plan to work in the cloud or earn, or earn a cloud security certification, it's essential that you understand these terms. I recommend that you use this video or the related study guide to commit them to memory. Well, that's it for this video. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.